This is a video review to help students trying to pass organisms, metacycling, and energy flow content assessment for middle school summit platform in science. However, it's useful for anyone that needs to review plant structures, photosynthesis, and cell respiration and how it's all connected. On the first objective, we talked about the key parts of the plant that help the plant do its job. We talked about the phloem xylem, we talked about the families of plants, about the leaf, the chloroplast. And so let's review what we did on those things. First, we talked about stems as the part of the plants that carries nutrients and helps support the plant. We talked about the root, which is the part of the plant that absorbs water and nutrients and also helps anchor the plant. Leaves, which are the central site of photosynthesis. The phloem, which is a tube inside of the stems, leaves, and roots, which carries sap from the leaves to the rest of the plant or sugar. Um, basically the products of photosynthesis in order to feed the rest of the plant. And the xylem, the tube that carries water and nutrients up to the leaves from the roots uh, to provide the leaves with what they need in order to actually do the photosynthesis. Other important parts were the stomata, which are tiny little orifices or holes in the bottom of leaves, which help control whether or not gases can come in and out of the leaves. Leaves use, use that, plants use that to protect the plant from water loss by closing them or opening them when there's no problem with water and they want to do photosynthesis by trapping carbon dioxide. The mesophyll cells are the cells on the inside of the leaves which actually do the photosynthesis. They're called mesophyll because meso means middle and fill means filled with chlorophyll, which is a green pigment that helps plants do photosynthesis. Organelles inside of these um, mesophyll cells are gonna help the uh, specialized machinery that helps the cell do its job, the most important of which is the chloroplast, which is the organelle that actually does photosynthesis. Speaking of photosynthesis, objective two focuses on that. The process of using the energy of sunlight to power the trapping of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order to build molecules such as sugar. In the same process, it also breaks down water to, to actually uh, make oxygen, which is very convenient because it produces oxygen for our atmosphere, which then other organisms use for cell respiration, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, do note that the water is actually where the oxygen comes from, and that the sugar is made out of carbon dioxide trapped out of the air, which means plants, no matter how big they are, are made essentially out of thin air. That can only happen with the energy of sunlight, captured by pigments such as chlorophyll, which capture most of the sunlight except the green, which explains why plants are green. This process is only possible with the help of an endosymbiont called chloroplast, which is an ancient cousin of cyanobacteria, which was enveloped by a cell long, long time ago, an ancient ancestor of algae, which is an ancestor of plants, um, to actually uh, help the plant uh, do this process. And the plant, the, that algae did not kill it because it provided an advantage. So in one hand, it actually, the, the chloroplast gets, gets the, the protection it needs. And then on the other, the cell gets the ability to make its own food. So chloroplasts are these living endosymbionts that have their own internal compartments and even DNA and help them do that. We also talked about the fact that photosynthesis is crucial for the planet because it provides all the food for the food chains thanks to the fact that plants produce extra food uh, for times where they cannot do photosynthesis. This has also helped the history of life because it made life possible away from volcanic vents where life was trapped to the energy of volcanoes until it learned or right, evolved the ability to actually use the sunlight. Now life can touch every surface of the planet wherever there is sunlight or wherever there's animals that can connect to animals that actually eat sun, uh, that you could use that sunlight to produce energy. And that's why we have forests all over the world and algae blooms near um, um, areas of the ocean that have a lot of nutrients, especially near the coastlines, because algae and plants all over the world are now producing this food out of sunlight or using the energy of sunlight uh, by trapping carbon dioxide. Which means, by the way, since they trap carbon dioxide, and release oxygen that they help the climate of the world because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So by trapping it, they exchange a greenhouse gas for one that is not, and that makes the world become less hotter than it would be otherwise. Also producing oxygen, which is gonna be used for cell respiration, which is an important process we are going to talk about next. But before doing so, remember, this is a process that is done by plants, yes, 
But since there's more water in the world than there is land, algae do this way more than plants do. A long distant cousin of the plants, right? Plants evolved from an ancient algae or something that algae share common ancestors with the ancient algae, right? So, but the actual primary organism that does this is called a diatom, which is a type of algae that lives in the oceans and blooms every time there's a lot of nutrients available. Cyanobacteria also does it, and that's um, bacteria that have the ability to do photosynthesis. And they are long distance cousins of the chloroplasts, which are inside of algae and plants. And then, in a way, since those chloroplasts can be kind of considered alive, technically, bacteria is what does it all. So, in a way, bacteria is what photosynthesizes in the world. The next objective focuses on the opposite process cell respiration which is how life forms release energy, useful energy, chemical energy that can actually be used for powering the processes of life. Glucose delivered by digestive systems of organisms all throughout the, the, the world or by the sap that's delivered on the, you know, the flow of plants is actually burned with the presence of oxygen, which is captured from the ecosystem with the help of things like gills, if you're a fish or other organisms like it, or lungs, if you're a lot of land animals or just getting directly from the environment, um, if you're a plant or uh, something that lives in water and is tiny enough. Uh, bugs use like a network of, of like tubes inside of them to actually distribute the oxygen. But whatever you do, you got to need that oxygen to burn that glucose. Now, the glucose will be, become carbon dioxide, which means then they breathe out the carbon dioxide and it's exhaled. And meanwhile, the oxygen is used to make another waste product, which is water. This is the actual formula you showing you the chemicals actual in it. And, but again, sugar and oxygen are reactants, and carbon dioxide and water are products. Those are wastes, which actually was what photosynthesis needs. We'll talk about that in a second. But the key point is making that ATP, that useful energy. Now, do note, once again, that the water is what actually the oxygen actually becomes and that the carbon dioxide comes from the breakdown of the glucose. And then all of this is done for the purpose of energy with the help of another endosymbiont called mitochondria, a long-distance cousin of aerobic bacteria that does the process of breaking down the sugar using oxygen to make a ton more energy than it would without it. Without the mitochondria, you would only make two of those energy packets called ATP. But with the mitochondria and a series of chemical processes, you can make a lot more. You can make 34 more, in fact. So you make 36 total instead of just two. So the mitochondria is crucial in the role of breaking down organic molecules such as sugar to make a ton of this ATP. Now, of course, do note that plants and algae all do both of these processes. They do cell respiration and photosynthesis. And in fact, they do more photosynthesis than cell respiration because they produce extra food and therefore also extra oxygen for times when they will not have sunlight, the day to nighttime, winter time, time they don't have leaves, time they don't have nutrients, if uh, there's lack of water. So in order to prepare for such eventualities, they make extra food. But then they also need to break down the food just like all the other organisms do. So algae and plants also do cell respiration, and that's very important. And it's nice, though, that they do more photosynthesis because that is what allows the ecosystems of the Earth to be supported with extra food and for the atmosphere to be full of oxygen. It is also important to note that cell respiration wouldn't be possible in organisms such as animals without the help of a lot of systems because the respiratory system uh, has to provide the, the cells of the body with oxygen. So we'll pick up oxygen from the air, deliver that to the circulatory system, which will then take the oxygen to every cell in the body to use, to give to the mitochondria to, so that that process can actually happen. Meanwhile, the digestive system will break down the food with the help of digestive enzymes and so that it, you can make it into tiny little packets that can actually be carried on the blood and towards every single one of the cells again where the cell respiration actually happens. So while respiration is a word that like, makes it sound like breathing, they're actually different things. The breathing happens with the respiratory system, but the rest, cell respiration is actually happening inside of every single cell. But the digestive system is also important because you wouldn't be able to eat these large, uh, take these large molecules such as starch and glycogen. Starch is the one that is this energy storage molecule that plants use for sugar, and glycogen is the one that animals use. And notice that the animals have more branches because they need more, more places to actually work from, to break down um, 
the product because they need energy delivered a little faster. But anyways, digestive system is important to break those down into sm smaller pieces that can actually be managed. There is another type of sugar called cellulose that, that is more for structure in plants. But some animals rely on that because they're herbivores. They all only green stuff in order to get their energy. Uh, we eat more of the starchy stuff that's the, from plants and the glycogen that's in store of, store of meat. Uh, humans and a lot of other carnivores or, or, or herbivores also do that, especially the ones that eat fruit. Uh, but there are herbivores that eat a lot of green stuff. How can they survive out of the cellulose? Well, they have to break it down. But they don't. They can't. But they do have bacteria living inside of them that can. So they are symbiotic organisms that help them break down the cellulose. And don't forget the role of the circulatory system in delivering things from the digestive system and the respiratory system to the cells and back. It will pick up the waste too, the carbon dioxide, and, and deliver that back to the lungs to be, to be taken out. Fat, by the way, is a molecule that we use to store extra sugar when we, make, when we, when we eat too much of it. And we don't need it right now for cell aspiration. The cells are fine. And we will then store that extra energy in fat. Cell respiration is a very ancient process that evolved a long time ago. And we know that's true because most of the life forms on Earth do it. And it must have evolved after uh, photosynthesis, the, at least the aerobic part, because it, it, it provided organisms with the ability to break down sugar with the help of oxygen, which would only be around after photosynthesis was around. But even before photosynthesis, the ability to break down sugar on the anaerobic parts, which is the glycolysis, should already be, have been around very, very early on because it gave organisms the advantage of not having to rely on energy from the volcanoes. They could actually use the energy that's stored in molecules such as glucose. But until these processes evolved, organisms were trapped living in, in uh, near volcanic vents. But afterwards, it's, it caused an explosion of life all throughout the planet, and a lot of ton of energy meant a ton of variety for life as well. Lastly, remember the cell respiration and photosynthesis are processes which are opposite from each other. The things that photosynthesis makes, which are glucose and oxygen, are the things that cell respiration needs to make water and carbon dioxide, which are the things that photosynthesis uses. Chloroplasts do photosynthesis, mitochondria do cell respiration. The oxygen that chloroplasts use, make, sorry, gets uh, converted into water by the mitochondria, which is then used by the chloroplast to make the oxygen. The glucose that, that chloroplasts make is used by the mitochondria to make the carbon dioxide which then is actually used by the chloroplast to make the glucose. And that's a cycle of matter that happens in life. Meanwhile, the energy flows through the matter because through this ecosystem because the energy of the sunlight is used by the chloroplast to power its process of photosynthesis to make food, which is then breaking down inside of the mitochondria to use the chemical energy that is used up for life. Now, the energy doesn't cycle back. It is used up. But the matter does cycle. That's why we say energy flows while matter cycles. But very clearly, these are processes which are opposite from each other. In fact, the equations are mirror images from each other. All the things which are reactants from one are products from the other and vice versa, even on the same amounts. And in this graph, you can see that comparison between the two of them. While one's goal is to make food, the cell aspiration's goal is to make energy. The things that cell aspiration needs, photosynthesis makes. Photosynthesis makes food for ecosystems and traps carbon dioxide, while cell respiration releases carbon dioxide and makes energy for life. Photosynthesis limits the greenhouse effect. Cell respiration makes the greenhouse effect works, worse. Photosynthesis makes the oxygen, while cell respiration consumes it. Photosynthesis needs energy from the sunlight. Cell respiration produces it. All of these processes use the same chemicals and also, also use energy, though. And remember, plants, algae, and cyanobacteria do both, while animals, animals, fungus, and most bacteria only will do cell respiration. So that is an overview of the objective four. And we are done going over the function assessment for matter and cycling and energy flow with all the parts in it. If you need more detail, remember I recorded detailed videos for each of these objectives. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time. Don't do anything that would make you more proud.